So in this video today we are going to be putting in the SJ A17 F8 MPW repair kit into our power supply board right here which is an A17 F8 MPW board and this repair kit solves a lot of common failures on these boards uh, most notably when your fuse blows immediately as soon as you apply power and this is due to some shorter components this kit also is upgraded over the original manufacturer spec so it should hopefully stop this happening again in the future so the kit comes like this, all the components are going to be bagged up and they all show their location with the board number. And we can go through, pull them all out. It comes with a replacement fuse as well because yours most likely is blown. And a couple of resistors, and the only piece that actually goes on the underside of the board that can be a bit of a pain, of, a pain to find is this one right here. Everything else is going to be on the top side, and it's all pretty close to where the power. So when replacing the parts in this kit, you're going to want to replace all the parts that are used on your board. Sometimes certain diodes are not used, for example. If it's not used on your original, you can just leave it out. But you will want to replace all the parts that are used. Don't leave any out. If anything's shorted, it could cause the board to blow again. The resistors are really easy, so R602 and 611, which are these two right here, it doesn't matter which way they go in, uh, you can just put those in any way around, it makes no difference. And the same goes for R608, which is this one right here. Once again, it can go in either way, it doesn't make any difference. Alright, so we're going to start off, we're going to replace Q600, which is right here. So first off, you're going to take your Phillips head and undo the screw. Once you remove the screw, like so, you're going to want to flip the board over and then desolder the component on the underside. And on the underside, they are marked, so you should be able to find it, but it's going to be this guy right here. And pull out the solder on that joint. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky if you're using the solder wick because it doesn't quite get down into the hole as much. If you have a solder pump or a desolder gun, that's much faster. But we'll show you using this technique to get it off. We can go ahead and the only thing holding it in place now is just the, uh, the paste on the back of it. And there we go. So you can go ahead and you'll need a little bit of paste. Sometimes you can reuse the stuff that's on there if you can kind of bunch it back together and it's not dried out. Uh, otherwise just a little bit of thermal paste on there before you put the new one on. Okay so here we have our new one we're going to put in and if you notice legs on the original obviously bend to a different shape so you're gonna have to bend that in to make it fit and you can just eyeball it but just take the middle pin up bend it up and if you can by hand you can bend it over otherwise you can just take a set of pliers give it that little bend in the leg and we'll see if it fits and it's pretty close just needs a little bit more bend it out a little bit more Give a little wiggle. There it is. It's in. And the screw will also help to squish out that heat sink compound to make a good contact. So we can clean up the legs. And I've just got a little acetone, but alcohol or acetone will work fine. And then just add a little bit of flux to it. There we go. And again on the next one, can I heat the pad and the pen? Push in the solder. And on to the last one. And there we go. And then we can trim up the leads if they're a little bit long. These aren't too bad, but we can just trim them down a little. Just to try and hold the pins when you snip them because sometimes they can fly off. Make sure you got eye protection on. And you can start off by heating one side and then the other and just kind of push. And like that one did, it should just slide right out. Okay, so we've got the uh, original chip off of that. And now we're going to take our desolder wick and we're going to clean up those pads because they need to be nice and flat and clean for the new one to go on. Okay, so we just got a little residue left on the board just from cleaning it up, but that's okay, it's not going to harm anything. Next, we need to put our chip in, and these do need to go in a certain direction. And if you look on the board, it does tell you. There's a solid black line right here. 
And if you look carefully on the chip, there is a dark gray band on one side. It can be pretty tough to see, but you do need to get these around so they match. So my dark bands and the black line go together like that. I'm going to use my tweezers just to try and help hold it in place. You can use your finger, but obviously you risk burning it. And then... I cheat it a little bit. I actually put the solder onto the tip of my soldering iron, rather than going into the joint like you would usually, but you can do it properly on the other side. So I'm going to heat up the plate. I'm just going to melt it in. And I'm just going to go back and check on the other side, make sure it's good. So next up we're going to replace Q601, which is a little transistor, and that goes right here. So once again you're going to flip the board over and find it on the underside. Okay, so we find it on the underside and it's going to be right here, it's these three little pins. And I'm just going to use my desolder gun, because it's a little bit faster. Put it right on there. And one of the things you're going to notice is that these have a flat side and a rounded side. And just make sure you get it in the correct way. If you look on the board right here, it's got the flat side and the round side, just make sure it matches up. And you might need to split, spread the legs open just a little. You're gonna push it in. D610, which is found right here. It's a little bit tough to get to, but we'll flip the board over and find it on the inside and start taking it out. And see, you should be able to kind of wiggle it out. There it goes. Pop loose, and out it comes. Same on that side. Now, one thing we want to be careful of is when we put this in, we want to make sure we get it right, right way around. And if you look at the other ones on here, they kind of give you a hint. There's a line at this end, and there's also a black line right on the diode, and that's the way you want to put it in. And you can fold it kind of beforehand to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to get it into a rough shape. Okay, so we put it in and we bent the pins back just to help hold it in place, stops it falling back through. Now we're going to take some flux and just paint it around the pins and the pad. So in this video we went through some of the, the tougher components and the ones that have directional needs and you've got to make sure they go in the right way otherwise you're going to damage the board or the component. These last few remaining ones, it doesn't matter which way they go in, as long as you replace them and put them in the correct spot, that's good to go. If you have any other questions, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching one of our many tutorials here at ShopJimmy.com. If you have any further questions regarding your repair, simply post a question in the comments section below or call our award-winning customer service team at the number on your screen. We strive to learn and share new TV repair tips every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and grow with us. Share our videos with your friends and help us spread the savings. And don't forget to hit that like button.